this session um, we're going to be looking at the biblical roots of creation care and looking after our planet. I'll be including some questions for you to work through in your group or on your own. Um, so feel free to pause at any time to discuss the questions or think them through. But I thought it would be appropriate to start with a prayer. So let's pray together. Well, Father God, we thank you so, so much for this time that we can come and spend with you. We pray, God, that as we look at this, this tricky topic of creation care and taking care of your environment, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would speak to us, that you would open our hearts and our minds to hear what you might be saying to us, Lord, through your word. Um, and we just pray that as we come together, we would grow in our faith and our knowledge of you, our understanding of who you are and how much you love us, Father. So we just thank you for, again for this time together, Lord, and for all your goodness to us. Amen. So, firstly, and I feel most importantly, one of our reasons for looking after the planet is because it's all part of living as a new creation. Now, I know that you can argue that living as a new creation should affect every single area of our lives, um, every decision we make, um, every person we talk to, living as a new creation can be incredible um, and it's what we're called to do. So if you'd like to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 17 to 20, it says, therefore if anyone is in Christ the new creation has come, the old is gone and the new is here. So living as a new creation is fundamental to walking kingdom lives and part of walking this kingdom life as Jesus did is taking care of the Lord's creation and it's so it's it kind of slips through the radar I think when it comes to creation care there's some very obvious verses that your mind might flip to which we'll probably look at a bit later on but this one I believe is so fundamental um, walking as Jesus did living a new creation life so my first question to you is why do you think it's important to look after the earth as part of being a new creation. What do you feel living as a new creation has to do with taking care of the planet? Um, so if you'd like to pause it for a moment to discuss or think it over, feel free. So now we're going to look at some of the reasons why living as a new creation is so tied up with environmental care. Tom Wright says, as image bearers, we are uniquely granted particular responsibility within and for the rest of creation. And it's this responsibility that I'm going to look at now. So if you'd like to turn to Genesis chapter 1 verses 28 to 30, the word says, God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it, rule over the fish in the sea and the bird in the sky, and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit within with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything has the breath of life in it. I give every green plant for food. And it was so. So this is one of those probably more obvious creation care verses that your mind might jump to when we talk about this topic. And it's, it's the first command that we see the Lord gives to man, is to take care of what he has given us, to steward it. Now, there is an argument going around, um, and some Christians have used it, that this actually gives us the excuse to exploit the planet and to do what we want with it because God's told us to subdue it. So my second question to you, feel free to pause again if you want to, is do you think this command does give us the excuse to do what we want with the planet and exploit it? Or do you think it is a mandate for us to take care of it? So hopefully you discussed and answered no it does not give us the excuse to exploit it. And I'm just going to move on to a chapter in Colossians to hopefully convince you why. 
So if you'd like to move on to Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 to 18, these verses say, The sun is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things and in him all things hold together. So what do these verses have to do with creation care? Well, here we can see that all things have been made, been made through our Lord, for him and by him. So why would we not want to take care of the planet that he has gifted to us? The planet that has been created through him and for him and by him. It seems almost a no-brainer to not want to take care of it. So finally, a last point I would like to kind of discuss with you guys and get your brains going on is that it's all part of loving our neighbours. Creation care is all part of loving our neighbours. It's now clear from scientific evidence that our lifestyles in this country are affecting those in others, in poorer countries who don't have the means to change their situations, to mitigate, to adapt. One key part of our faith that Jesus hammered home all the time was loving one another. And I believe this includes people all across the globe, not just the immediate people around us. I think this is also what we talked about, part of new creation living. So my question to you is, are we loving our neighbour as Jesus asked if our lifestyles here are knowingly affecting people in other countries? So third question for you, how do you think our lifestyles here might be affecting those in poorer countries and what can we do to stop this? So if you'd just like to discuss any things that you've heard or seen on the news about how our lifestyles over here might be affecting people across the globe um, and feel free to pause again if you'd like to. So finally I'd like to look at the spiritual power that we have over creation. This is a little bit of a controversial topic but we see Jesus throughout the gospel stilling storms, having power over creation, he did the fig tree. And if he said greater things than these you will do, then it stands to reason that we have the same power through him inside of us to do the same. It sounds crazy, but have you ever prayed over a dying plant and seen it flourish afterwards? I have. A lot of people believe this is new agey but I don't see it as any different as praying for healing over people. It's just part of our stewardship of creation. So question four, what do you believe about our power over creation, our stewards of it? Do you believe we can do what Jesus did and still storms? Or do you think that's beyond our mandate and our life as Christians? So hopefully you've had a good chance to discuss those questions amongst you or have a think over in your mind on your own. Um, I'd just like to, to briefly go over what we've looked at today. So reasons and biblical mandate for taking care of our planet. So number one, it's all part of new creation life, living kingdom lives, taking care of this beautiful planet that we have been given which our second point was, it's been given to us as a gift. We see in Genesis that God's first command over us is to take care of creation and to steward it, steward it and love it. Our third point, why? Because it has been created through him and for him and by him. So why would we not want to take care of a planet that has been created through our Lord, for him and by him? Our, our next point is it's all part of living new creation and loving people. If our lifestyles here are affecting people across the globe, then it's part of our mandate as new creations to love everyone and to have as little impact negatively on them as possible. And finally, our power over creation. Whether you believe it or not, we can see that Jesus stills, stills storms, withered fig trees, 
Do you believe that we have the same power through him inside of us to do the same? So thank you for, for joining with me, bearing with me, um, and having a look at the biblical roots of, of creation care, and hopefully it's got your brain thinking. Thank you to Kay Pike, who's been putting up those excellent eco tips on Facebook. If you would like to keep following them, show us how, how you're doing with those. Um, they're fantastic ways just to look after our environment a little bit better. So thank you for, for this time together, spending this time with us.